In this video, we're going to focus on managing LDAP server. Now, LDAP, which is one of the most important uh, application enterprise application that you're probably going to en encounter pretty much most of the businesses around the world. Now, <clears throat> Cisco uh, call manager or CUCM manager basically can be communicated with LDAP server. In, that, in this section, you will explore the configuration required to allow Cisco Unified Communication Manager to import synchronized user account from lightweight directory access protocol or LDAP. Now, in our case, we're going to use Microsoft Active Directory. At first, we're going to begin with overview of LDAP integration with Cisco Unified Communication Manager, where you can use the LDAP synchronization during an initial uh, system setup to import all the user account from your corporate directory. Now, imagine you have 5,000 employees within your organization. Now, you most likely already have an active directory in place. So it makes sense to import those user account into Call Manager instead of recreating all those 5,000 user account. And also, if one of the user account users leave the company, you don't have to remove them from two different systems. You just simply remove it from the LDAP server. It is, it is here that you will understand what exactly is a directory integration is. The various system requirement and the user account that uh, user account that is needed to accomplish this task. Now you will also explore the level of uh, le level of integrations that are available. There are two type of uh, uh, integration. You have LDAP synchronization and LDAP authentication. From here, you will understand the various attribute of the LDAP integrations uh, in terms of how to map the pro appropriate field between Microsoft Active Directory and Cisco Unified Communication Manager. Along with the consideration with the full synchronization, while we will also learn how to do incremental synchronizations should you need to do that. Next, we will explore things like access control group, role, privileges, and group user accounts that are created from LDAP server or as well as from local system as well. And then we're going to end this chapter or this section with talking about future group template. We will talk about how you can use a future group template and LDAP integrations to provide even more automated solutions. <clears throat> so integrating voice application with corporate LDAP directory is a common task for many enterprise IT organizations because it provides centralized, uh, it will provide you a centralized uh, user management where you can configure the user account in one location, makes it much more easier for you to manage the system. One common requirement is to enable user lookup. For example, when you are going in a, a white page or a phone book, right? From IP phone or any other voice endpoints. In order to do that, it makes it, makes it much easier if you're integrating the user account from uh, Active Directory into your system. Why? Well, simply because you already have the user account created there. Another requir requirement for integration might be provisioning user from corporate directory into the user database for various application. Uh, this method avoid having to add, remove, and modify core user information manually each time you change uh, changes occur. So let's say if you have a user account called FCon created in five separate devices, whenever certain thing changes about that username, you're gonna have to modify five different devices. Rather than you do it once in LDAP server, and then all those five different applications or devices will get to see that information. Some cases, you may need to even authenticate the user account. So authentication of end users and administration, administrators of the voice application or video can use those user account to uh, log in for authentication purposes. Enabling directory authentication allows IT department to deliver single login functionality while reducing the number of passwords that each user need to maintain across various corporate applications. So here you can see that I'm going to, uh, I can use the LDAP username in an active directory for provisioning my uh, phone book or authenticating application. Uh, end user can use their user account to change their settings on the phone. And finally, you could use endpoint to log in for authentication purposes. Now, there are two types of user account, end users and application users. 
End users are user accounts that are associated with a physical person and in it provides interactive login. This category include all IP telephony users and Cisco Unified Communication Manager while using user groups and role configuration. Now, for example, for every employee in your organization, you're going to create something called end user. Whereas for a system, we'll use something called application user. Now, end users are pretty much included in your user directory, phone book, and they can be uh, created locally or from LDAP server. Now, whereas application user, they are not used for interactive logging, although they can be used for authorization purposes. They are not included in user directory or white page, and they are not capable of using LDAP application user as a, from LDAP server. Now, the default behavior of user-related operation for Cisco Communication Manager is that if you are using a local uh, account, it's like end user account access, so each end user access the Unified Communication Manager user option page via the HTTPS and authenticate with their username and password. If the end users were configured as administrators using the user group and role, uh, the end user can also access the administration page with the same credential. Similarly, other Cisco features and application authenticate to the Cisco Unified Communication Manager using HTTPS with the username and password. Now, authentication that is carried by the HTTPS messages is relayed relayed by the web services of the call manager to an internal library called IMS, right about there. That basically provides a default configuration for inter internal authentication. Now, the IMS library will authenticate users and applications user against the embedded database. In this way, the physical users of your call manager system and internal application accounts are authenticated using the credentials that are configured within the call manager server. Now, end users may also authenticate with the username and numeric password or PIN number when logging into call manager like extension mobility uh, from an IP phone or uh, auto attendant console, whatnot. In this case, authentication will be challenged by the IMS. Now, in addition, user lookup that are performed by the Cisco collaboration endpoint via the directory button on your phone are also accessed from the embedded database. LDAP, on the other hand, is a directory typically stored data that do not often change. I mean, how often do you change user, uh, user ID, right? You hardly ever. As long as the user remains the employee for that organization for five years, 10 years, their username probably doesn't change. Information in the LDAP database are often optimized for high number of reads and very occasional write and update requests. LDAP directory provide application with a standard method for accessing and modifying user information. This capability enables companies to centralize all the user information in a single repository that is available, not just with the call manager, but with various other enterprise application. This capability results in reducing maintenance costs by facilitating easy execution of add, moves, and change. Hey, you want to change Faisal's last name? Just do it on the LDAP server. All, all other enterprise will get to see the same. Call Manager currently supports following type of LDAP server, Microsoft Active Directory, Sun Directory Services, and Open LDAP. And it has to be version 3, or supports version 3. LDAP integration option. There are two options you have available, synchronization and authentication. The synchronization, which is a process, an internal tool called Cisco Directory Synchronization, or DIR Sync, uh, that basically synchronizes several user attributes manually or periodically from your Active Directory or Corporate Directory. When this feature is enabled, Users are provisioned from the corporate directory in addition to local user provisioning through the call manager. So not only you can create a user account and import the user account from call manager, but you can also create a user account locally as well. This feature applies only to end users. Application users are treated differently and are provisioned via the Cisco Unified Communication Manager administrative interface. In addition, in summary, the end users are defined in the corporate directory and synchronized with call manager database while application users, users are stored 
in in the, the call manager database, but are not required to define in the corporate directory. Now, LDAP authentication, which is a process that enables the IMS library to authenticate the user's credential of LDAP synchronized the end user account. So when you enable LDAP authentication is IMS library that does the authentication uh, user uh, using the credential of the LDAP synchronized user. Now maintaining and authenticating an application users internally and uh, within the call manager database resilience for application and features that use this account to communicate makes it easier for you to maintain. Cisco extension mobility pins are also kept local. So in case of you're using a LDAP uh, integration, you can use the user account from LDAP server, but the pin number has to be from local the call manager. So those are some of the features different between LDAP authentication and synchronizations. Now you can only turn on LDAP synchronization, no problem. But to enable LDAP synchronization, you also uh, authentication, you need to enable both synchronization and authentication together. These are some of the supported LDAP servers currently supported by the Cisco Unified Communication Manager. All right, so that's pretty much the introduction to uh, our LDAP server. Hopefully you understand and got a peek about what the, the two type of user accounts are. Remember that Call Manager currently supports two type of user account, the end user and uh, 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 application users. End users can be created locally. Application users create, can be created locally. End users can be imported from Active Directory, but the application users cannot. So uh, that's pretty much the introduction to LDAP server. I will see you in the next.